Advances in 3D scanning, biomedical imaging, and 3D printing have opened incredible new opportunities for engineers and researchers. We can now capture real-world geometry, whether it's a mechanical part, a medical device, or even biological tissue, and use it directly for computational analysis. But before we can run a CFD simulation, there's an essential step. Converting that scanned mesh data into a clean, watertight, solid body that we can work with in ANSYS. In this video, I'll walk you through the process of importing STL files into SpaceClaim, cleaning up the scanned part, and converting to a solid body that can be accurately meshed in ANSYS Fluent. Let's go ahead and get started. In our new space claim window, we're going to start by uploading our geometry. We can do that by coming up to the Assembly tab and opening File. Scan data is likely going to be in three different formats, all which can be handled by space claim. These are going to be OBJ, PLY, or STL, and in this case we're going to use STL data. The geometry we're looking at today is actually biological scan data from a 3D CAT scan. It would be the same process if we were using a 3D scanner or some other imaging technique and had an STL file. As we can see, our geometry is fairly clean, but a little bit rough through some of these regions, and we can also see that we're missing some of our faces, so we don't have a closed geometry. So the first thing we want to do is we want to close up that geometry and make sure that we have one solid watertight body. We can do that by coming up to the Facets tab and going to the Holes tool. And we'll click on that tool and it's going to highlight all of those openings. We'll then go ahead and click the green check mark and we'll close up all those faces. There's a little bit of roughness from the scan data and it's a little bit coarse, so we want to go ahead and smooth the body to get better simulation results. And to do that, we're going to use the shrink wrap tool. So in the shrink wrap tool, we can actually set the size that we want to use for our facets. The smaller we make the size, the more accurate we'll maintain our geometry and the less smoothing we get. So you want to find a balance between smoothing the data enough to get rid of the noise without smoothing it so much that you lose the geometry that you're actually trying to capture. The other feature we're going to check is preserve features to make sure that we don't decimate any critical feature. And we'll leave the rest of the options on the default setting. We'll then go ahead and select the body and click the green check mark. So now that the shrink wrap is completed, you can see we have a much smoother, much more even faceted body with nice triangle elements everywhere we can see. If we now took this faceted geometry and converted it to a solid and tried to import it into ANSYS meshing, ANSYS meshing would actually recognize each of these faceted faces as an individual face of the body. And it's going to have a really tough time trying to mesh that. So what we want to do is we actually want to combine a lot of these mesh elements and define this geometry with a series of surfaces that can accurately capture the body. We can easily do this by coming up to the tools tab using this auto skin function, selecting our body and clicking the green check mark. The auto skin function is going to give us this nice smooth body with faces that define our geometry. The next thing we want to do is make this a watertight solid body. And we also want to make sure that we have nice flat faces to define our inlets and outlets. So to define our faces, what we're actually going to do is use a plane to cut off some of the geometry. So we'll come up to the design tab. We'll use the plane tool. We'll put it in just any arbitrary location and then use the move function to move this plane so it's intersecting that inlet where we want it to intersect. Once we have the plane where we want it, we can come up and use the split body function, select our body, select the plane, and then go ahead and delete the section we cut off. We're also going to cut the body anywhere else where this plane was intersecting. And we're just going to go ahead and recombine that before we move on. So we use the combine tool, select this upper geometry, hold control on the keyboard to make sure that we're doing an addition, and then combine these two legs. And we're just going to go around and now use the move tool to move the plane to this other inlet as well as the two outlets and do the same. So now that we've cut all of our faces, we'll now go through and patch all of our openings to make our watertight geometry. To do that, we'll come up to the fill tool. We can triple click on this edge to select the whole loop. Go ahead and click the green check mark 
and define a face. Go ahead and do that for the rest of the open faces on the body. And we'll see once we do our final face here, we'll change from a translucent body into an opaque body. And that will let us know that we now have a solid geometry, which is watertight. We also now have these nice flat single faces where we can define our two inlets as well as our two outlet boundary conditions. And these nice smooth faces which we can mesh inside ANSYS. So with that, our geometry is now ready to go. We have a solid watertight geometry with no faceted faces that we can move right into either fluent meshing or ANSYS mechanical meshing and do any sort of CFD or structural analysis that we want to do. If you found this video helpful, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions about this video or suggestions for future videos, please leave a comment down below. If you'd like to support the channel so I can continue to make videos, please consider donating through the super chat function at the bottom of this video. As always, I thank you guys for your support and I'll catch you in the next video.